In this video, um, I'll teach you how to solve linear first order ODs. By linear, it means it's linear in Y. So you have the dy dx term. You have a term uh, linear in Y, which can be multiplied by any function of X. So P of X can be a nonlinear function of X equals a right hand side, which uh, G of X can be a nonlinear function of X. So P of X and G of X are supposedly given in a, in a specific problem. And the initial condition is Y of X naught equals Y naught. Okay, so the nice thing about linear first order ODEs is that there's a exact closed form solution. And in this uh, video, I will show you how to find that solution and what that solution is. Okay. So to find that solution, we introduce an integrating factor. Which we call mu of x. Okay. And the idea of the integrating factor is that when we multiply the both sides of the differential equation by mu of x, we obtain an equation that can be integrated. So we multiply both sides of the equation. So we have mu of x times uh, dy dx plus p of x y equals then multiply the right hand side by mu of x, mu of x times g of x. Okay? Uh, now mu of x is supposed to allow us to integrate this equation. In order to allow us to integrate this equation, we want mu of x times the left-hand side to convert the left-hand side into a derivative of some function. Okay, And then we can integrate the derivative of a function, dx, by uh, the function, by anti-differentiation. Uh, okay. Um, so, what do we want the left-hand side to equal? This will be our condition for mu of x. So we require that um, mu of x dy dx plus p of x y equal to d dx of some function. And you have to think hard about which function it should be d dx of, because you have to be able to solve this equation for mu. So um, I know the answer. Uh, and it turns out that that function uh, should be um, mu of x times y, y of x, right? So here, I remember that this is a differential equation for y. So this is an equation for y equals y of x, right? So when I drop the x dependence of y, you know that it's there. OK, so if this is the case, this will be the equation that we use to solve for mu. But assuming that this is satisfied, so if mu satisfies the above equation, right? then what do we have? Well, then the differential equation, this equation here, we replace the left-hand side by the derivative. So we have d dx of mu times y. equals mu times uh, g. Okay? And this equation we can uh, integrate, right? So the left-hand side is a derivative, so I can integrate it. I can write it as the integral. This is uh, mu times y prime, right? That's a derivative, dx is equal to the integral of mu times g, 
dx. Uh, we can integrate from x naught, right? The initial condition is at x equals x naught, so we can integrate from x naught to x, x naught to x, right? And the left-hand side, then, we can use the fundamental theorem of calculus so that um, uh, the integral of, of mu y prime is just mu y. So we end up with mu of x y of x minus mu of x naught y of x naught. So uh, y of x naught is our initial condition. So mu of x naught we can call mu naught, right? That would be our mu of x naught, y naught, right? Equal to this integral, x naught to x, mu of x, g of x, dx, right? And then we can go ahead and solve for y of x, so y of x is equal to uh, pull the mu naught y naught to the right hand side divide through by mu of x so 1 over mu of x times uh, mu naught y naught plus the integral from x naught to x mu of x g of x dx okay so that is our solution for y of x so <coughs> that's the formal solution, but we haven't determined what the integrating factor is yet, mu. So we need to go back to uh, this equation, right, which is the equation condition to determine mu, okay? So let's go back to that equation. So uh, what is the mu that satisfies that equation? Well, we need to multiply it out to C, right? So we end up with mu dy dx plus mu times P times Y. And the right-hand side, we can use the product rule to take the derivative. So the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, okay? So mu will satisfy this equation. And we look at this equation and we see, aha, the y's are canceling, right? We have a mu dy dx here and a mu dy dx on the other side. So those cancel. And then we have a mu p y equals d mu d x y. So nicely, this y also cancels. And we're left with a differential equation. The right-hand side, we can put on the left-hand side. d mu d x equals p of x times mu, right? And we can solve this. So we also have an initial condition, right? Mu of x naught is what we called mu naught. And then we can solve by separating variables. So we have a d mu over mu equals a p of x dx. We integrate from the initial value of x, x naught, up to x, mu at the initial value of x, mu naught, up to mu, right? We end up with a log mu over mu naught equals integral from x naught to x, p of x, dx, and then we solve for mu. So mu of x is equal to uh, exponentiate multiplied by u naught, mu naught. So mu naught e to the x naught to x p of x dx, right? So we found our integrating factor. Um, <coughs> we also have our solution, right? 
So let me uh, put that here. Here was our solution. Here is the integrating factor. Up here is the integrating factor. Here is the solution. Um, the only problem that we have is we don't know what mu naught is, right? We don't know mu naught. But if you look at the solution, we have mu naught, right? We have a mu naught in the denominator here, right? Because mu has proportional to mu naught. So there's a mu naught in the denominator. There's a mu naught in the numerator here. And there's a mu here in the numerator, which is also proportional to mu naught. So there's a mu naught in the denominator, a mu naught in the numerator, and a mu naught in the numerator. So we can cancel the mu naught, and the solution for y then becomes independent of mu naught. Okay. So what that means is we can simply take mu naught equals 1, right, since the solution is independent of mu naught, okay? So then that gives us our final result, which I'll write very cleanly so that you can see. Okay, so the final result that we've derived is that to solve dy dx plus p of x y equals g of x subject to the initial condition y of x naught equals y naught, right? We find the integrating factor mu of x with mu naught equal to 1, right? We find mu of x, which is e to the x naught 2x, p of x dx, right? The exponential of this integral. And then we write the solution which is simply y of x, right, equals 1 over mu of x times y naught plus the integral from x naught to x, mu of x times g of x dx. Okay and that's the solution. So in order to solve this linear first order equation, we need to do the first integral, which is the integral of p of x dx, and then we need to do the second integral, which is the integral of mu of x g of x dx, and then we have the solution. Okay, That's all there is to it.